the iconography of Britain. Number one, the red telephone box. The iconic status of the red telephone box is undeniable. The lowly telephone kiosk is an immediate go-to symbol of Britishness. When Hollywood wants to make it clear a scene is supposed to be happening in the UK, they will plonk a telephone box in front of the screen. A multitude of English language academies here in Spain use imagery of the red telephone box to help reinforce the Englishness of their teachers. The British red telephone box is perhaps the most iconic piece of design ever commissioned and is recognised globally as a symbol of Britishness. The first thing to be aware of is that there are several different designs of the British red telephone box. There are in fact eight in a series of red telephone boxes. The one you have in your mind's eye is probably the K2 or the K6. The K1 or Kiosk 1 was made of concrete and first introduced in 1921. It was designed by the Office of Engineer-in-Chief of the General Post Office. The idea of standardised design was an attempt to replace the varieties of systems inherited by the General Post Office when created in 1912. The kiosk was unpopular with local authorities and seemed outdated immediately upon introduction. Eventually, 6,300 were installed across the country, but only five still remain. By 1923, the general unpopularity of the K1 resulted in the Metropolitan Borough Joint Standing Committee independently seeking a new standardised design. The results were not inspiring. The Birmingham Civic Society produced their own design in reinforced concrete, but it too was rejected in preference for the K1. The Birmingham Civic Society persisted and gathered support from the Royal Institute of British Architects, the Town Planning Institute and the Royal Academy to lobby the Postmaster General to reconsider. He relented and the Royal Fine Arts Commission organised a competition inviting three respected architects, Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, Sir Robert Lorimer and Sir John Burnett, alongside designs from the Post Office and the Birmingham Civic Society. The winning design was that submitted by Giles Gilbert Scott. He had recently been made a trustee of Sir John Soane's museum and the domed top of his winning telephone box design has more than a passing resemblance to Soane's self-designed mausoleums or tombs in St Pancras Old Churchyard and Dulwich Picture Gallery, London. Sir Giles Gilbert Scott came from an impressive family line of architects, famed for their Gothic revival designs. His grandfather, George Gilbert Scott, was responsible for the University of Glasgow building and the Midland Grand Hotel at St Pancras Station in London, alongside a long list of churches and cathedrals. His father, George Gilbert Scott Jr., was responsible for St John Baptist Cathedral in Norwich and the Dulwich College in South London. Sir Giles himself was the architect for the magnificent Anglican Cathedral in Liverpool, the iconic Bankside Power Station, now better known as the Tate Modern in London, and the exteriors of Battersea Power Station, made internationally famous after featuring on the cover of the Pink Floyd album, Animals. The K2 was constructed of cast iron sides on a concrete base with a teak door. What may look at first like a very basic and simple four-sided box has several clever design features that go unnoticed. The door handle was a metal cup inserted into the door rather than a protruding handle. The door also featured a drip cap and the crown motif in the roof dome was pierced to enable ventilation. The design of the sides of the kiosk incorporated reeded moulding around the window panels which correspond to the dimensions of the door, therefore tricking the eye and disguising that there is a door on one side only. Giles Gilbert Scott suggested a colour scheme of silver with a blue-green interior, but the GPO chose red. Despite the scheme's intention to be a countrywide standard design, due to costs, £35 and 14 shillings per kiosk, the K2 was mostly restricted to use in London, with the K1 still featuring widely across the country and in rural areas. By 1934, only 1,700 examples had been installed. The GPO contacted Scott once more, to adapt his design to produce a more cost-effective kiosk to be installed nationwide. The K2 ceased production in 1935. Of the 1,700 installed, 224 still remain. The K3 Evolution was a simplified version of the K2 and made of concrete construction. It had less decoration and was not painted red, but a cream colour instead. Compared to the £35.14 and 14 shillings unit cost of the K2, the K3 cost a mere £13 to produce. 12,000 were produced, 
of only two still in existence. The cheap construction meant they often got damaged or did not fare well in the rugged weather of the UK. The K4 was designed by the Post Office Engineering Department and was an adaptation of the K2 that included a post box and a stamp machine. It was significantly larger than the original K2. A stamp machine was installed on the exterior. It was nicknamed the Vermilion Giant and proved unpopular. Due to its size, it was only ever employed in London. The stamp machine was noisy, making telephone calls very difficult, and there was no weatherproofing. A single production run of 50 with only five remaining. It was an unsuccessful experiment. The K5 is a curious bywater of the telephone box story. A design never put into production. No examples remain. It was constructed of wood with steel panelling. It is unclear if that is because it was a prototype or if it was intended for concrete construction. It has been considered that it was intended to be used as a temporary kiosk in exhibitions. We will never know. The K5 not only never saw the light of day, but is then lost in the shadow of the British red telephone box that we all know and love. The K6. The GPO invited Gilbert Scott once again to submit an adapted design to celebrate the King's Silver Jubilee in 1935. This was to become the ubiquitous nationwide kiosk introduced from 1936 and in production until 1968. 60,000 were installed and an impressive 11,000 are still to be found on the streets of Britain today. The kiosks were slightly smaller than the original K2, the window pane pattern was simplified, the crown of the dome was moulded and the ventilation slots were moved to be part of the illuminated sign. Some 8,000 were installed as part of the Jubilee concession, which encouraged towns and villages to apply for a kiosk. A year later, the tricentenary concession, celebrating the 300th anniversary of the post office, provided a further 1,000 kiosks to local authorities, paying a five-year subscription of £4. In 1939, a Mark II version was unveiled with vandal proofing, and in 1949, the Royal Fine Arts Commission became involved once more as they permitted kiosks to be painted in different colours to not blight rural landscapes. Following this instruction, some kiosks were seen in green or battleship grey. Further designs came in the shape of the K7, K8 and the current kiosk KX, which echoes the elegance of the classic K6. But it is the K6 which is the global icon. The red colour, known as current red, as current as in berry or buns, uh, is defined by a British standard BS381C-RED 539. The colour was introduced in 1968. Previous kiosks were painted in a slightly darker shade BS381C-RED 538. The iconic red colour was under threat when British Telecom was privatised in 1980 and the company adopted a corporate colour scheme of yellow the following year. They started to repaint the K6 kiosks. After the red had been received so poorly all the way back in the early days, there was this time a public outcry at the decision to repaint them. The Daily Mail started a campaign against the yellow peril and questions were asked in Parliament. In the House of Lords, the Earl of Gowrie the Minister of State for Employment insisted BT should abandon this ridiculous scheme. Mark Lennox Boyd, MP, asked the Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, if she would treat the decision with the greatest possible dismay. Thatcher, who had decided to privatise the telephone system, said she could see my honourable friend's point. It was not much later that BT announced that only 90 of the 77,000 traditional kiosks had been painted in different colours as an experiment. After the introduction of the updated kiosk models, in January 1985, the announcement was made that the K6 model would be replaced. BT stated they did not meet the needs of their customers. They were expensive to maintain and clean, few people liked to use them, and handicapped or disabled people were not able to use them at all. There was a spirited campaign against the decision, but BT held firm. Many local authorities then used legislation designed to protect architecture and historic buildings to keep the K6 or the even older K2 boxes on their streets. 2,000 or more were listed and protected in that way. Several thousand were left in place in low-revenue remote rural locations, but otherwise thousands were removed and sold. Some were even converted 
to shower cubicles in private houses. An interesting exception to the red telephone box is the city of Hull. In 1914, the Hull Corporation purchased the city phone network and did not become part of the general post office network. The city had a slightly adapted K6, painted cream, without a crown motif and using a different typeface for their signing. The city only relinquished the phone network in 2007. It has never seen a red telephone box and there are still 125 of the 500 K6 kiosks on the streets of Hull. The K6 has enjoyed a second life in various different guises. 1,900 have been converted into medical centres by British Telecom. The idea was introduced in 2009 and the telephone equipment is removed and replaced with an automated external defibrillator. But BT also introduced the adoption scheme in 2008. Effectively, mobile phone use had killed the need for public telephone boxes and BT therefore invited communities to adopt K6 and K2 boxes if they could present a project to give the kiosk a new use. This has led to K6s across the country being used as coffee shops, libraries or art galleries. The adoption scheme did not permit the K6 to be used as, as a telephony device. Many K6 boxes are now used as book exchanges. Some K6s in London are being repainted green and converted into solar-powered mobile phone charging points. Many have been restored and pressed back into service, replacing the battered and unwelcoming steel and glass KX100 models that had superseded them in the first place. Some K6s have made their way over the Atlantic. There is a distinct example outside the British Embassy in Washington DC. Several K6s are still in use in Lake Havasu City in Arizona, as this is where the old London Bridge was relocated to. The city of Porto, in Portugal, have a design of red box that is heavily inspired by the British K2 or K6 design, but original K6s can be found in Kinsale, County Cork, Ireland, painted green. Red telephone boxes can be found in Malta, the West Indies and Cyprus. Thames Town, the English imitation town in China, sports, yes you guessed it, red telephone boxes. British red telephone boxes have spread across the world. Check out this useful tool to find the one nearest to you, or at best, the ones that imitate the iconic British design. The humble red telephone box was used in album cover art by Bowie. A red box features in music videos by Adele and features in numerous films. I haven't got any more money! <laughs> The K6 design is used as a money box and frequently used as containers for chocolates or biscuits, a salt and pepper shaker, Christmas decorations and teapots. A permanent fixture in the departure lounge souvenir shops in UK airports. The red telephone box, or more specifically, the K6, will be a part of the street scene in Britain for many years to come. A design that has made a place in all our hearts and is instantly recognisable throughout the world. A true British icon. The K6 red telephone box, a design that instantly calls out Britain.